Hey guys, on today's video, I'm gonna show you three ways to remove paint from your propane tank without sandblasting. Stay tuned. Okay guys, I moved inside here so I can show you a few things that you're gonna need when, before you start uh, working on your tank. One thing you wanna keep in mind is some of these tanks are from the 50s and uh, you'll have like lead-based paint, things like that. So you wanna be careful not to get it in your eyes or whatever, you wanna wear some eye protection, some hearing protection, stuff like that. So I just went, by the way, none of this stuff, I'm not sponsored by any of these guys. I literally just went down the road to Harbor Freight and picked up these items. There's a lot of different manufacturers that make this stuff. Um, these are on the cheap end of the spectrum. So if you're just getting started, these are pretty affordable. So the first thing you're gonna do, now you could just wear like a pair of safety glasses. These happen to be tinted like number threes or something. You can wear these if you want, but uh, I've actually wore these before and I've had a chip of paint go behind my eye. And I got a thing called chemical conjunctivitis from it. And what that is is basically pink eye, but it's induced by dust and other kinds of stuff that gets in your eyes. Um, anyway, so ever since then, I've wore some kind of splash proof goggles. And what these are, they've got like a seal around them here. They're just, a, these are like uh, five or six bucks at Harbor Freight right now, something like that. They've got a little vent at the top so that you still get some ventilation to keep them from fogging up. Um, but these will keep your eyes well protected. Um, so I do recommend something like that. Um, another thing we're gonna talk about here is some hearing protection because we're gonna use this needle gun. Uh, here in a little bit, I'm gonna show you what that is. But I prefer these blue ones like this. I think this whole package was like seven bucks at Harbor Freight and there's 50 earplugs in it. You can also get them that have like a uh, string that connect them so you can like tie them to your welding hood or whatever. Uh, stick them in your ear, they're reusable, clean them, they're cleanable, stuff like that. Um, it's fairly cheap. You just want to protect your hearing because those, anything that's banging on that uh, steel or also just grinders and things like that in the shop, you want to make sure to have that. Another thing we're going to talk about is some, is some kind of breathing protection. So um, this right here, this whole box of uh, face masks was like $5.50 at Harbor Freight, and I think there's like 50 of them in here. This is on the low end. I, I wouldn't necessarily, I'm not going to wear this just because I don't like them. I've actually got a different style here. Uh, <clears throat> this is more of a all around respirator. Now, just to, just to kind of tell you a little bit about these kinds of uh, air filtration, if you're doing this on an actual job site, you have to be really cautious about your ability to breathe, like especially with COVID and stuff like that coming around. Um, you, you need, there's actually a certification you're supposed to have to wear like this kind of a breathing respirator. I'm not worried about it. I've been wearing them for years and years. It's up to you if you want to get that done. Um, but if you do decide to wear something like this, it's filtration is really, really deep. Um, so it's, it's going to keep all that lead based pain out of your lungs and stuff like that, or at least a majority of it. I highly recommend you wear something like this. There's different sizes. This happens to be a large, um, it's got a silicone nose piece that goes over your nose and your mouth. And then it's got these replaceable air, uh, filters that go on there. You can get these pretty much anywhere. I think this whole thing was about $29 at Harbor Freight. There is a cheaper one you can get. Uh, up there that was like $14.99, but I didn't think it filtered good enough for what this is. It's what they call a 95% or whatever. So uh, I just learned that today. This one's actually 99.7, so it's a little better. So anyway, that kind of wraps up safety a little bit. The other thing is, is you want to make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated space because even after, if you're grinding this uh, lead paint and stuff off, it's gonna be in the, in the room and it's gonna get on the walls and stuff like that. So I do recommend you move this thing outside, uh, outside of your shop and you know, where air can blow on it and stuff like that. So we're gonna do it outside today. Top of that, it's gonna minimize how much cleanup you gotta do. So uh, anyway, um, if you need any of these things, you can get them on Amazon, whatever. I might even put a few links in the description for you. All right, guys, now we're ready to move on to the next step here. We're going to talk about all the different tools that I'm going to be using today. Now, there's a lot of different methods for doing this uh, without needing to sandblast. 
This just happens to be three different ways that I've personally done it um, on the cheap, basically. I did actually get a quote just so I had something to talk about in this, in this uh, video here. And I've got uh, basically uh, six pieces here, which is the combination of three 500 gallon, long skinny 500 gallon tanks. And that quote came back for $1,000 to have this thing all sandblasted down to bare metal. Two reasons I didn't want to do that, which is important to know. Uh, reason number one is, is because I'm wanting to get the lead paint off, this, just get the paint off of it, just so I can get to that mill scale and some of that patina that's on there. Um, I don't really want the silver, ba the silver paint on it. Um, I'm not even really concerned to get 100% of the silver paint off. I just want to get that raw metal mill scale look. And if I was to have this sandblasted, the sand, black sand is what the guy would use, that's the cheapest, and that would get it all the way down past the mill scale, and you'd have this white, bright, pitted, uh, bare metal with no mill scale on it kind of finish. That's a bit intense for me. Now there's a lot of different media you could have used also. Could have used baking soda blasting, which I don't like because paint won't stick to it. Um, you could have also used uh, walnut shells, um, corn cobs, there's all different kinds of things that they can use these days to, to get different finishes uh, on the sandblasting. <clears throat> but those other media, they're a lot more expensive. Uh, so it was $1,000 on the cheap end to do all of this. And it was going to take about 10 hours and I'd have a massive mess of sand out here that I'd have to clean up. So. Anyway, I decided that I just want to go this way so I can get the finish I want. And a thousand bucks buys a lot of grinder discs and stuff and tools. So uh, anyway, we're going to start off with grinders. And uh, this is just a Milwaukee grinder. Um, I've got the guard off here just to show you kind of how this works a little more clearly. Um, some of these discs, some of these discs don't work real well with the uh, guard intact. Now, I mean, you could get another guard or something, whatever, if you wanted to. Um, I don't really recommend using it without because you'll get a lot of the flakes coming off of these discs. Um, but a grinder like this, and you'll get a wheel that looks something like this. I've got some brand new ones here I'll show you. But this is a paint stripper wheel. It's pretty thick. It's got some kind of a really intense abrasive on here. And when you set this down on there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go in an orbital fashion and it's going to attempt to flake off or, or uh, grind off that paint and fling it out of the way, right? So they're actually called polycarbide. I just realized as it says it right there, abrasive wheel is what it is. This is a four and a half inch, which is what size grinder I have. These things are about four and a half dollars a piece. Um, truth be told, to do one complete smoker here, which is the equivalent of a 500 gallon tank um, that I've got to strip, it's gonna wind up being, I don't know, probably six or eight, maybe even 10 of these discs. Um, after you use them for a while, the, the one real good benefit to these is that they are cheap. The second thing is, is that, uh, you know, they, they're, they're, a grinder's cheap. Um, they do work pretty effectively, but the real downside to them is they do tend to gum up. And if you was to get this up against uh, like a piece of strap or something that's welded to the tank or one of your feet or something sharp, it'll just grind away at this edge and fling this stuff everywhere. So that would be one downside to using this. Um, but you can just simply just take your nut off the grinder. These have a standard size hub. When you stick them on there, you uh, tighten, your, your, uh, tighten your nut down on your, on your uh, grinder there. And then just give it a good twist. You can get out your, you can get out your uh, wrench or whatever if you want to tighten it more, but I usually just do hand tight, just holding that thing on the back right there and we're ready to go. Um, like I said, you can also use the, the guard with this, but if you look at it, you're going to have most of your wheel is not going to be exposed anymore. It's going to be really tough to get in some spots. So be careful. And of course, we didn't talk about it, but you're going to have to have some gloves because all this stuff is going to be throwing crap everywhere. So be careful for that. The second method to, to doing this without having to sandblast is going to be a thing here called a needle gun. Now these things are loud. I got this one down at Harbor Freight. It's about a hundred bucks, right at you know 90 bucks or so um, for this style of gun. Now what it is, is it comes in this box right here. This is Chief brand. It runs on air 
And when you get it, it's going to be in pieces like this right here. There's this thing, these needles with the spring on it. Be careful because those will all fly out of there. When you get it, you're going to drop this thing in there like that. Those needles stick out. And then you've got this plunger here. It's going to have air coming in. You pull the trigger. It's got this plunger. And that's going to be pushing against these needles, which are backed up with that spring I just had out of here. And they're just going to, they're just going to hit that thing really hard. <clears throat> now read the directions on the one you get. But this one here has three different levels of tension. And you can just push in and turn like that to get those different tension levels depending on your air pressure and which setting works the best for you. Now you do have to oil this a lot. Make sure you put the right fitting on here for your air hose, a quick connect, and use some uh, air tool oil. It doesn't come oiled. You're gonna have to drip some in there and then make sure your air is, is, uh, isn't just like a solid stream of water going in here so your tool lasts. What you're gonna do when you're using this, make sure you got hearing protection on because they're loud but you're just gonna basically pull on this trigger right here with your hand, and you're gonna take this and put it up against the surface, and these needles are just gonna sit here and poke up against that surface until they flake off whatever paint's in the way. Now, it's gonna take a little while because you've only got about a one inch or so diameter of these needles that are blasting, and you're gonna have to get yourself a good pattern where you're going side to side, and I'm gonna show you that here in just a minute. And then the final method, which is my favorite, uh, it, it's a little more expensive, uh, is this tool right here. It's called a surface conditioning tool. Um, I've, I've been looking at the Eastwood one now for a couple of years, and honestly, I didn't know that Harbor Freight had one um, until I was in there shopping for the needle gun, and then I found this, and I was like, hot dog, we're going to use that. So I haven't even opened this up yet. I just wanted to show you. We're going to use this at the end, but it's got these different grit drums on there that you can interchange. You can replace them. But it's just a big old, basically it's a sideways grinder that's got this abrasive material on it. Similar to the material on these wheels is on the, on the more abrasive end. And that is like a 40 grit. And it, I'm telling you, it'll just like scream through this paint. Now, I'm gonna show you some different ways to use it to make it, to make it more effective here in a little bit. But I'm gonna unbox this real quick. Here's, here's an example of one of the drums. This one here, let's see, this is the 240 grit. This one's super fine, but it's just got these little drum, this little gear, you just stick it up on there. The one thing you want to be careful of is when you're using this, if, you're if your radius is like this on the tank, like this, and you're running this way on it, it'll cup out the inside of this wheel. So you can do that if you want but then you wind up with a cupped surface and you can't get on flat stuff very good. So I tend to run it like this over that, like, like this over that uh, radius edge of that cooker. Let's see what else we got in here. Here's the other two wheels. This one here's pretty cool. It's 120 grit. It's got, uh, looks like a piece of flap disc in between each one of these rows of abrasive. That's pretty awesome. And then this one here is the hardcore one. This is the one we're actually going to use. Um, it looks like it's that same polycarbonate stuff. It looks pretty identical to what these wheels are. But uh, using these in the past, they're great. So I'm pretty excited to use that. I think you can even get like wire wheels and everything else for these deals. So uh, here's the tool. It's not very heavy, looks like it's just got an Allen wrench here, comes with a wrench. It's got like four different wrenches with it, some extra screws. You just loosen this up, then you slide your wheel on and it sits in there like that. Anyway, we're going to get the camera moved and get this all set up and we're going to start removing some paint. All right guys, now I told you about all this safety stuff so I got to use it all right. So we're going to start off with the grinder here and uh, I'm just going to kind of make a couple passes right in here somewhere. Just kind of show you how that works and uh, let me put all this stuff on like I said earlier um, sometimes you can't use these with a guard just because like the guard you can't get this flat you got to get it flat on that material and that guard sticks up and it keeps it from working if you use this on an angle and toe at it it's going to wear the disc super fast and you're not going to get enough uh, surface coverage for the tool 
So uh, make sure you wear some good gloves. These are those Blue Demon Stingers. These are my grinding and moving gloves, and I even weld in these sometimes. But uh, these are good gloves. Anyway, your face mask, here's that mask I was telling you about. You gotta make sure it's got these pads on it and uh, it fits your face well so that you don't have any leakage around it. And then if you have to, there's little adjustment strings you can pull. Here we go, we're gonna hit it right here. Okay, now I want to show you real quick how this gums up right there. So what you got to do every once in a while is you'll have to knock this against a flat surface like a piece of corner of a piece of steel or the edge of your tank, something like that, just to kind of clean it. But don't dig when you do that. You just want to knock some of this gummy stuff up. This paint on here, the silver stuff especially, is real gummy underneath. But you can see here how it's gotten down to where I kind of want it for that, that mill scale to show. And then it did get a little bit of uh, mill scale off. You want to try not to dig in one spot. You just want to kind of get that going to where it'll, it'll pull that, you know, that silver paint off and get down to the mill scale. And another thing is the right, you want it to throw this way. You want to be going right here on the top of your disc so that because that's the friendly side of your disc it's going to throw everything down instead of back at you and also you're going to you're going to let the top end of this push the paint that way if you try to come this way with it it's actually just going to push the the gummy stuff back over the top of your mill scale where it was a minute ago and that's not good you're, you're going to want to go left to right left to right like you're reading a book with this. I'm going to do just a little bit more of this and then we're going to switch over to the other tool. Okay guys, now we're going to start with the needle gun. Um, we're going to follow a similar process with this, but we're doing a much smaller concentrated area. So this might take a little bit longer. Like I said, hearing protection, safety glasses, because this is going to throw flakes everywhere. And uh, of course it's lead paint, so make sure you got your respirator on. We're going to get started. Joe's got to go get some earplugs. He forgot them. I'll show you while, while Joe's getting his earplugs in. You can see the moisture coming out of here. Make sure you drain your compressor. I know that my compressor, my airlines are all in the attic, full of water. So just be careful. Keep everything oiled up and stuff. Drain your compressor when you can. Use a water separator. This thing's a mean motor scooter, though. It's doing great. I've got it on the, the least tension on my setting right here while I'm going. So these needles are moving a lot. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and keep going. So you can see how much faster this moves. It moves quick. Um, one thing else to point out is like if you wanted to use a combination of these two things, you could use the needle gun first to get rid of the heaviest layer of this. And there's still some silver paint there. You could run that little uh, flap wheel or that little uh, grinder disc over it real quick on the grinder if you wanted. Um, or we can use this surface conditioning tool. We're gonna go grab it next and see how it does. And I'm gonna start it back over here on, on brand new paint. And then I'm also going to use it over here where I just needle gunned and see how that does. Stay tuned while I get set up with that. All right, guys, so now we've done the grinder disc. We've done the needle gun. Now we're moving on to this baby right here. This thing here is going to do really good. Now, if you notice on the grinder part, I was removing more material than I wanted. And the grinder disc, that abrasive wheel, it got kind of gummed up and it was kind of a pain in the rear to deal with. We use the needle gun and man, it plows through this upper layer of stuff, but it still leaves just a little bit of that silver flaky in there. Um, you could use both of those, but now I'm gonna go over 
brand, a brand new spot with this surface conditioner and see how it does all on its own. And I'm going to take this, it's got this wheel already on there. It's variable speed. I'm going to run it down around half of what it's capable of, right around four. And uh, it kind of winds up and gets started. It is gear driven or belt drive or something here. Um, kind of winds up and gets going. And we're going to use it and go this way with it, up and down on the tank so that we keep this wheel flat and we don't cup out the wheel. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so on brand new paint, it doesn't appear to be as aggressive as the other wheels I've used in the past out, right out of the box. There's one that you can get that's a lot more stone on it. Um, anyway, it's still doing a pretty good job and you just got to kind of stay with it. It does a huge surface area, you know, pretty fast. I mean, I did basically all of this in just a couple of minutes. Um, but on the, the thicker parts, it's, it's not really that gummy parts kind of staying in it. So maybe we should do the part where we needle gunned a minute ago and just see how fast it takes care of that. Now, one thing I also want to point out is it is also taking the mill scale off and that's, that's a deal breaker for me on this one because I don't want to go all the way down to bare metal. I want to leave some of that mill scale on these. So it looks like I'm probably going to wind up using just the needle gun and either stay in with that or needle gun it and uh, use, the, use a flap wheel. But let's see what it does right here real quick. I'm digging that. That's awesome. So it looks like I'm going to wind up with kind of a spotty look to this. I'm going to have some patches of bear, some patches of mill scale. Um, if I wanted to, I could hit that with a little bit of, uh, I don't know, muriatic acid or vinegar or something and kind of get a little bit of a rust on it. Maybe even just wet it down and walk away for a little bit, come back in, rinse it and oil it, and that's going to pop and look awesome. So I'm pretty happy with that right there. I think I'm going to go with on these, I'm gonna go with that needle gun and just get rid of the thick, heavy stuff. But once that was off and I did this a little bit, it just took seconds and I did that whole thing. I think that you can even use one of the lighter uh, grit uh, drums in there probably. This one's pretty aggressive, it's 40 grit. The other one in there is about 120 grit, so it would get down a lot. It, it wouldn't go down as deep into that mill scale as this one does. So anyway, um, Kind of let me know down in the comments what you guys think about these. Like I said, you can sandblast. It's expensive. It's fast. That's what's good about it. You don't have to do it yourself. Um, but you're going to sacrifice either money or you're going to sacrifice some unique uh, stuff you can do to the finish on your spoker. You guys all know me. I'm a super fan of linseed oil. That's what I like. And uh, I think linseed oil, if you give it the right material on your on your tank or whatever you're working with it's, it really turns out nice almost better than paint in my opinion and it's a lot more durable you can just continually reapply it without having to do more surface prep so anyway like and share and all that kind of stuff if you don't mind give me a subscribe to this channel and uh, you know let me know what you think about these tools if you go out and get them yourself and tag me in your videos and posts and stuff appreciate you and uh, till next time keep your smoke thin and blue